A Delicate Balance, reading on page 240. The Constitution also balances the powers within the federal government. For this reason, the federal government has three branches. Each is responsible for separate tasks. The first is the legislative branch, or Congress, which is responsible for proposing and passing laws. It is made up of two houses. The Senate and Upper House has two members from each state, while in the House of Representatives, or Lower House, each state is represented according to its population. The second branch of the federal government is the executive branch. This branch includes the president and the departments that help run the government. The executive branch makes sure that laws are carried out. The third branch is the judicial branch, which is made up of all of the national courts. This branch is responsible for interpreting laws, punishing criminals, and settling disputes between states. The framers of the Constitution created a system of checks and balances to keep any branch of the government from becoming too powerful. For example, the framers gave Congress power to propose and pass legislation. The president has the power to veto or reject laws that Congress passes. However, Congress can override the president's veto with a two-thirds majority vote. Interpretation of the Constitution has provided the judicial branch with its own check. This check is the Supreme Court's power to review the laws passed by Congress. The court may strike down a law that it finds unconstitutional in violation of the Constitution. The delegates knew that the Constitution was not a perfect document. They believed, however, that they had founded a strong government that still protected the ideas of republicanism. The long and difficult debates at the Constitutional Convention lasted 16 weeks. Finally, in September 1787, the delegates signed a final draft of the Constitution. Only three of the 42 delegates who remained refused to sign. These three were Eldridge Jerry of Massachusetts and Edmund Randolph and George Mason of Virginia. The delegates then sent the Constitution to Congress, which sent it to the states for ratification.